What's up YouTube, Crispy Charizard here. Today I'll be discussing all of the major plot points that are slowly and very subtly developing in the Pokemon Sun and Moon anime. Now, I will be discussing all the latest developments, so I am up to date on the Pokemon Sub, the latest episodes, which I will be discussing in detail, or at least the most important points, so if you are not up to that point, or if you only watch the dub, well then, I have to warn you for spoilers, so watch only if you are up to it, or if you don't mind spoilers at all. The Marshadow cameo in what was probably just, you know, some sort of easter egg because it was episode 1000. Now, to be clear, this is has nothing to do with the movie Pokemon I Choose You. That movie was Marshadow's, like, true debut and... It's not even a different. It's not even the same Marshadow. It's not even the same universe, obviously, because I've mentioned many times in previous videos how the new movies take place in some sort of alternate timeline, just like the games are all alternate timelines. So this is a different Marshadow. Now, I would have loved for this to be important in the plot, like for this Marshadow to be related to Ash the same way the Marshadow in the movie was, you know, had something to do with Ash, but. The point is, Marshadow made a cameo. It was seen by both Rotoms. Both, like, Ash's Rotom and the Rotom that took its place. But apparently, the photo that was taken of it, not only was it blurry and not very clear, but the replacement Rotom just deleted it because he felt like it. So, Ash saw that, Ro uh, that Marshadow, didn't recognize it, never showed it to anyone else. So, uh... He may, he may recognize it in the future if it ever shows up again, but he probably won't. And even if he did, I mean, I doubt it's going to show its face again. It's a mythical Pokemon. That camp meal was pretty significant. I was happy to see it. It was like, you know, something for the fans. Fan service. The next point is Litten, or should I say Torcat's development. This is another small point. It's not that big a deal. Uh, another thing is that Ash is uh, continuing with his island challenge and he is more inspired than ever because Professor Kukui finally announced to the class that he is developing Alola's first Pokemon League. The, he first mentioned that back when they visited Kanto and Pallet Town. So Professor Kukui finally announces that he's going to make a Pokemon League. Uh, there's also a mention of Sophocles' cousin, and on Ula Ula Island, before he can battle the Kahuna, he has to beat a totem Pokemon. Now, I have no clue which totem Pokemon he's going to battle. But since there's no trial captains in the anime, even though they're different characters, but they're not... Like, the trial captain isn't even a thing. Before he battles the Kahuna, he's going to have to battle, I don't know, some totem um, Vikavolt? Or maybe totem... Uh, totem Maru? I, I doubt it. Maybe totem Mimikyu? I don't know. I, they haven't revealed which totem Pokemon he's going to battle, but his trial is not the point. The point is that I have a feeling that he will get a Steelium Z, which he was going to get eventually because Pikachu's Iron Tail could be converted into a Z-Move Corkscrew Crash, which is a really you know cool thing to see. He's already practiced the pose, so eventually Pikachu may use Corkscrew Crash, and I'm, ex I'm excited to see what that's going to look like. But as for the Pokemon League itself, this time, because Alola is so different, and in the games, you're not beating a champion, you're becoming the first champion in the games. And Ash is wearing the same clothes as the protagonist in the games. And I feel like this was intentional. The anime is trying to give us these hints, and I really hope that Ash has some chance of getting far. Now, he was in second place in the Kalos League, and he has been getting progressively better. So he's going to win eventually. I, I wouldn't watch the anime if I didn't believe that. But you never know what they're planning to do to keep the show running forever for the kids. That league is coming, and I don't know what's going to happen. Next point is very interesting. Although I don't know, it's not that important yet, but it's slowly becoming more of an issue. Lycanroc's temper, which is very similar to Infernape's blaze you know, all the way back from when it was a Chimchar and belonged to Paul. Well, he just has a temper. But this has nothing to do with, like, an ability like Blaze. This is just something, part of its biology and psychology. 
As everyone knows, a rock ruff has a temper when it's getting ready to evolve, and Ash's rock ruff had a temper, nearly cost him the battle with Olivia, and it attacked Rowlet, if you remember, a long time ago. It ran away and evolved, and because of Tapu Lele's influence for some reason, it evolved into a new form that people have very probably never seen before, and we all know the story, it's the Dusk form, but just like in the games, even though he has unique green eyes, they turn red like a midnight Lycanroc whenever he's attacking. I mean, whenever he's attacking in the game, but in the anime, they turn red whenever he's angry, which happens whenever he gets dirty, because for some reason, part of his personality is that he likes to stay clean. And this has happened twice. Once against Gladion, a long time ago, and just now, in a battle against the Kahuna of Ula Ula Island, Nanu. Now, Nanu is important for other reasons, but for some reason... In order to test Ash to see if he's ready for the trial and the grand trial, because the grand trial is a battle against Nanu, and the trial will be against the totem Pokemon. But before any of that, for some reason, Nanu challenged him to a pre-trial, which has never been done before. So in the pre-trial, he, he battles Nanu to test if he's ready for the regular trial against the totem Pokemon, and after that, the grand trial against Nanu again. And he sends out his... Crocodile, and Crocodile beats Lycanroc senseless just because Lycanroc lost control because he got dirty, and Ash hasn't dealt with it yet. Ash knows this is a problem, but he hasn't figured out how to solve it. And I'm really interested to see what will happen because of this, because Lycanroc's temper is a plot device that they've done before, but it's a little different from Infernape back in Sinnoh. And gaining control of this power is also similar to Ash gaining control of Ash Greninja's power, which they had trouble with, though for different reasons. So, uh, I'm curious to see what's gonna happen. Now, one of the biggest surprises is that Team Rocket's getting stronger. Not only did they first get a Dark Z-Crystal from a trial against a Totem Raticate a long time ago, many episodes ago, they f followed Team Skull or something, and they battle a Totem Raticate, and Totem Raticate apparently let them have a Dark-type Z-Crystal. Which they were trying to get anyway, but of course they never had the Z-Ring to make it work until now. After a phone call to uh, Giovanni, Giovanni tells them that if they want to use Z-Moves, they can get a Z-Ring, possibly, from the Kahuna of Ula Ula Island, who Giovanni says is an old friend of his. Now that's more, you know, that's that's going to be our next point probably, because it's very significant. But before we get into that, the point is Team Rocket finds Nanu. You know, if you want to know the details, watch the episodes yourself. I'm not going to spoil every detail. They finally get a Z Power Ring, not just a Z Ring, but a Z Power Ring, which, to be honest. My theory is that after Ash gets Z powering from the four Tapus when they go to before they go to Ultra Space to save Lusamine, which happened uh, a few episodes ago, it seems that the Tapus visited their respective Kahunas, which would be Hala, Olivia, Nanu, and whoever's the Kahuna of Pony Island, since we haven't gotten to that point yet, and taught them that from now on Z powerings are to be used instead of Z regular Z rings because Z power rings are capable of using special Z crystals, the ones with the strange shape, as was introduced in Ultra Sun and Ultra Moon. So, Nanu just gives Team Rocket a Z power ring after learning that they are, they're part of Team Rocket and that obviously they were trying to save Acerola, but those are, you know, spoilers. And for some reason, they decided, Pokemon decided, that they just they, they needed two Z rings, I mean, two Z crystals. And well, like, if Team Rocket wasn't strong enough, Jesse's Mimikyu beat Pikachu episodes ago without a Z move. And then Acerola's Mimikyu, which happens to be both a ghost and shiny, which is a whole different issue, decides to give Jesse a Mimikyu Z because it saved them. So I'm like, okay. They have a Z-Powering, not one, but two Z-Crystals. 
And they already successfully used one of them, you know, Black Hole Eclipse. And they only was able to use that because uh, James's Marini learned the move Knockoff. So Knockoff now becomes Black Hole Eclipse, and it's very strong. But what I'm not understanding is why when they're using one Z move, they give it all their power together, all three of them. First of all, I thought it was only supposed to be one trainer who gives the Z power to the one Pokemon. But it's not just one person, it's two people and a Meowth. Is Meowth so anthropomorphic because of its ability to talk and its intelligence that it counts as a human? How does this even work? Is this legit? I'm not I'm not happy about ambiguous details like that. I like my details to be clear, cut, and dry. You know, the only time I like a mystery is when it's building up for plot devices. But this is just weird, you know. All three of them use Black Hole Eclipse together. Although it did look cool. It looked really cool. So now they have a Z Power Ring, a Dark Z Crystal, and a Mimikyu Z Crystal. But Jesse has yet to use Let's Snuggle Together. Which Mimikyu should be able to use because it already knows Play, uh, play Rough. This is very significant. Not only did her Mimikyu, like I mentioned, beat Pikachu episodes ago with its own power without Z Power. The fact that Team Rocket now has this new power of two Z-Crystals and a Z-Power Ring means that they are probably capable of beating Ash and getting his Pikachu, and they know it. They've already mentioned it. They were like, wait, we can beat him now. And they make these faces like, what is this feeling? We can beat him now. This has never happened before. They're stronger, and they know it. And I am really excited to see exactly how Ash is going to have to deal with this because, you know... Team Rocket being, you know, comic comic re comic relief and being weak gets old after so many years. Them actually getting stronger is just so refreshing. And they needed this. This is important plot devices. This is very important developments. I am not complaining at all, but I'm kind of nervous to see, you know, Ash himself is not weak. He has lots of Z-moves Z himself, but... uh don't forget the issues with Lycanroc and Pikachu, well, he's technically not getting any stronger and it's not like Ash has all of his other Pokemon like Charizard and uh, Ash Greninja with him, so he's going to have to get stronger. Because not only did uh, Nanu beat him because Lycanroc lost control, but Team Rocket now has this new potential which they haven't confronted Ash with yet, but they will soon. The next important plot device is involving Poipol. Now, Ash has caught Poipol episodes ago. They know it's an Ultra Beast. They're taking care of it because they don't know where which wormhole it came from since they can't find the wormhole. But something that is obvious about Poipol, if you've been watching the Japanese intro for Pokemon, is that, according to the music and the, and the pictures, Poipol seems to be attracted to light. Now, anyone who's played the video games, and they, it's obvious, Poipol being attracted to light which also led it to be attracted to Pikachu, which is why he let Ash catch him, has something to do with Ultra Necrozma. Ultra Necrozma is a giant source of light, and Poipol being attracted to light has something to do with Ultra Necrozma. So maybe Poipol has a history with Ultra Necrozma. Not, not only that, but when Acerola showed Ash a, uh, a book that shows Solgaleo, Lunala, and Ultra Necrozma, with Ultra Necrozma being referred to only as Lord Light, because that's the only name they have for it, because it's an ancient legendary Pokemon from another dimension, and they know it's an Ultra Beast. Everyone, I mean, Acerola says the book says that Lord Light is an Ultra Beast, and Ash knows that Poipol is an Ultra Beast, but he hasn't made any connections himself yet. But we have, because we're intelligent, and we have, you know, the power of irony and, you know, the video games. It seems obvious that Poipol is attracted to Light and Pikachu because it's some somehow attracted to Ultra Necrozma and it's abundant light. I don't know exactly what Poipol's place in the story is going to be. I'm almost convinced that Ash isn't going to keep it forever. Plus, he's never battled with it, so it's not like... I don't, I don't know its strengths. It's probably even a baby. It acts like a baby. I bet it's weak. But why it's attracted to light, I have no clue. Maybe it came from Ultra Megalopolis, and Ultra Megalopolis is going to be part of the plot, but we haven't seen any hints of that. Although, 
I'm pretty sure that, you know, if they're going to follow the video games, they might as well. And the final plot point, which is very significant, is that involving Giovanni, Nanu, and Necrozma. Because lately, it seems that Giovanni might make a comeback. He hasn't become significant. Like, he hasn't been significant ever since that time in Unova when he tried to take control of Meloetta's power and the power of the forces of weather. You know, Tornadoes, Thunderous, and Landorus. And then he lost control and Team Rocket had to stop him. And, like, you know, that was an interesting season. But this might be even more significant because Giovanni was... Very important in the video games with Ultra Sun and Ultra Moon, he comes back with Team Rainbow Rocket. I don't know how far the anime is going to follow the video game. I hope it's not an exact thing because I like some diversity, I like some surprises. But the fact that he's old friends with Nanu, now that was a surprise. Giovanni gives Nanu a phone call, and Nanu's surprised to hear from him. And when Giovanni sent Team Rocket to get a Z ring from him, he wasn't lying. They are old friends, or at least acquaintances. Nanu seems to be either wary or afraid of Giovanni, which means he's not a bad guy, or at least he has some sense, with Giovanni acting friendly as if, you know, either Nanu owes him a favor or uh, or Giovanni considers Nanu like some sort of good friend. But Nanu doesn't act like that, and he even hanged up on him with some excuse. Now, it's obvious that Giovanni's interested in Necrozma because even when our Team Rocket tells them that they overheard Ash and Acerola discussing an Ultra Beast called Lord Light. Giovanni's assistant, her, his secretary, says, Oh, we already know about Lord Light. Go get some serious work done. Go, go do some real work. We already know about Lord Light. And I'm like, really? Well, obviously they already knew about Lord Light because in the phone call between Giovanni and Nanu, Giovanni asked Nanu if he remembers about Lord Light. Meaning, back when they were friends, Lord Light was something that Team Rocket was interested in. And Giovanni is after him. So Giovanni is after Ultra Necrozma. Nanu hangs up because he doesn't want to help him, making excuses. So Nanu has some sense. He doesn't want to help Giovanni. But he doesn't also want to like be his enemy either. So he's acting like, you know, he's playing it safe. But I don't know how long that's going to last. And uh, obviously some sort of climax is going to happen at the end of this season. Or maybe later. I don't know exactly what's going to happen, but spoilers, my prediction is Team Rocket is going to show up in Alola with a lot of grunts, maybe. Maybe it's going to be Team Rainbow Rocket, maybe some other villains from the past are going to show up, and that's going to be awesome if it's true, but no promises. He's going to be after Ultra Necrozma, aka Lord Light, Nanu is going to be important, and uh, other details. Before Ash even reaches the Alola League, he's going to have to find a way to beat Nanu, and the trial, and the grand trial again. Or maybe he even won't do the pre-trial this time, who knows. And the only way he'll do that is if he trains his Pokemon and learns to control Lycanroc's temper. And as for Poipo's purpose in all of this, I have no clue. Well guys, that's all I can think of. And that is all of the significant plot points and developments that are happening in the latest episodes of the Pokemon Sun and Moon anime. I hope you enjoyed the discussion. Uh, please like and subscribe and comment and share with a friend and I uh, hope you enjoyed the video. I'll see you guys next time and check out my channel and my other videos.